Welcome back everyone to more Splatoon. This time in Octo Valley, we are going to take on the final level we need to take on before reaching the our final fight. Uh, that intro sounded a lot better in my head, but then my stumbling ruined it. Ah, uh, whatever. Now's not the time to be self-conscious about that. Now's the time to take on the Octo Strikers once and for all. Well, technically our fourth time taking them on, but logistics, I don't care. Alright, unavoidable flying object, skate park encounter. So yeah, the last level we're doing for this entire story mode series is... Um, it's going to be Black Belly Skate Park. Don't know why the words were just not coming to my mouth, I was, because I was just too busy reading the text. Alright. Yeah, just sneaking past them. Might as well pop all these balloon fish. Alright. Got a key. There's some armor right there. Uh, rather not. Alright, take him down. That's what I call the non-lethal takedown. Alright, bubbler. Very helpful against Octostra- Oh, hello there! Didn't mean to get you right away. Seeker. Alright. Oh, that was actually very helpful. That one wasn't. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I, I know I have the key, but I'm gonna go back just to get that sunken scroll, because we need it. Oh, need to climb up here. That's right. This is a platformer, after all. And how did I not take any damage from that whatsoever? Wow. Alright, sneak over here. Launch pad. Here we go. Oh, you can see fireworks going off in the background. Must be a certain event that I was alluding to a couple videos back. Alright, so we got some Octobombers accompanying this Octo Striker, which, as you can tell, Octobombers are basically just tiny Octo Strikers. Just keep swimming around until all of them have been defeated. I think you get an egg bonus for uh, using the balloon fish, but I'm not sure. No, you don't. Keep, sw keep on swimming around, get all the eggs possible. And that's it, so now I can just get him all the way from over there. <laughs> Alright, there we go. We've taken down our final Octo Striker. So let's take back the Zapfish, and then that's it, we're done. For the most part. We've still got <laughs> the, the final boss to do, but yeah. Alright. Got some lore. Oh, my beloved Judd. It seems the day has finally come. This capsule is designed to remain cryogenically sealed for 10,000 years. Goodbye, my perfect little kitty cat. May your meows echo through the ages. I was almost perfect with that reading. Okay, all jokes aside, yeah, we finally found out 
how Judd came to survive the crisis that caused the, the downfall of human civilization. He was cryogenically frozen for 10,000 10, years, and as soon as the Inklings found, him, found his cryogenically frozen body, they set him free, and he decided to live among the Inklings, acting as a judge for Turf Wars, which is a really cool thing. Yeah, it's really cool. I was about to say really cool concept, but what about it is clever? I have no idea. I don't know. Um, but yeah, apparently another part of the lore says, like, Judd was really, really close to his, to his death. And as soon as, like, he was, um, let out of his chamber by the Inklings, they managed to increase his lifespan. Which is why, even though he is very much an old man who has survived over a hundred years in the Great Turf War... Um, he's still alive to this very day. So, yeah. This is, um, this just shows, like, how deep the Splatoon, the Splatoon lore is, and no one really gives it credit for it outside of the people who actually play the game, kinda. Eh. What I'm saying is this game was slept on hard for absolutely no reason, and it's one of the most underrated gems of all time, but that's a rant for another time. You got all the little guys. Just the great zapfish to go. Next time on Octo Valley, we take on the final boss. The Octobot King. But that's enough of that. Let's just go. Let's just go all the way back to Inkopolis Plaza, and use the weapon for the video. Cliffhangers. Awesome. Does anyone even remember the range blaster exists? Its design is basically the same as the blasters. They just gave it one sprawling and called it a day. Anyways, this thing has higher range than the blaster, given the name, but it also has a lower fire rate. But it still plays pretty much the same way. A direct hit can instantly kill but the shots tend to deviate more in the air due to having higher range. And this is equipped with splash walls, which is not very helpful for a blaster. Most people would much rather conserve their own ink instead of using it for a splash wall. The special is the ink strike. Yeah, this weapon is honestly much better for turf ward than tower control, and the special really shows it. Onto the other set, the custom range blaster has the splat bomb. This is super good because an indirect hit can set up for a kill very easily. And the special is the Kraken, which lets this set play more aggressively than the vanilla could. And now onto the Sheldon's Pick set, the Grim Range Blaster. This thing looks super cool, and it's such a shame that it's an alt of the Range Blaster of all things. Anyways, this has the Burst Bomb. This is very good, especially with damage up. A bomb's indirect and the blaster's indirect can almost guarantee a quick kill. It's so good. And for its special, it has the Killer Whale. Cheapest special, fits very well the blaster that can't get specials very easily. Yeah, despite all the good I said about the Grim Range Blaster, I'm not a huge fan of this one. Blasters don't really stick with me as much as the other weapons do. Yeah, we got back-to-back -back blasters. I feel like the Range Blaster uh, is the one nobody, uh, nobody really cares about or really remembers. And the Rapid Blaster is the one that nobody ever uses, unfortunately. Oh well, I'll cut back to a battle, just so I don't have to be sad about these blasters. Okay, to my surprise, I actually got into a match fairly quickly. Anyways, I'm taking this into, um, into tower control, because I feel like having a ranged blaster type weapon is actually pretty good for a mode like this. And I already screwed it up. This low fire rate is definitely going to be the death of me. Oh, okay. Probably could use a splash wall there, but tch, screw that noise. Oh, that's very unfortunate. 
Okay, yeah, this low fire rate is gonna be the death of me. It's already been the death of me twice, this slosher fellow. Did I just say fellow out loud, unironically? Ow. Ugh, awful. Never mind. Being on the tower with this thing is an awful idea. And no one bothered to super jump to me. Embarrassing. That was the worst splash wall ever to exist. Just spamming, come on, just like jump onto the tower, Jesus Christ! Alright, we've taken the lead, good. Actually got a kill with this thing. How do they miss so much with the splatter shot? I have no idea. And we're still going! Oh, you love to see it. You love to see it. Uh-oh. Yeah, that... Yeah. Oh, they got two... They got two scopes here. Lord. Alright, so I think the best way to counter them would just be to just go straight around them. Because scopes can only see what they can see. They can only see in a first-person point of view. And also, it's a... It's a scoped point of view, so it's... We already know how scoped, weapon, scoped weapons work. I've never covered them in the series, but I don't really think I'm going to. Because... Scoped, like, those sort of weapons, they hurt me. On an emotional and physical level. They hurt me because of the people that use them. They hurt me emotionally because I can't use them. Two splash walls, okay. Oh, got a kill. Oh yeah. I I did not mean to see bag there. I just slipped, my finger slipped, so yeah. Excuses, excuses. It's always them. Did I get a hit there? Not sure. Oh well. Yeah. Okay. First round of the video was a win. Honestly, kind of surprised, because I've literally never touched this weapon, ever. Oh, the irony. I got timed out in Turf War, but I can actually play ranked, because people are playing ranked. That's actually hilarious to me. But it appears to be the same people, so that's rather unfortunate. That was not a good splat bomb throw. That one, however, actually probably could have done something. Uh-oh, this is awful. This is bad for me. What? I got killed by an E-leader. Scoped. Oh, they had a lot of damage up. That's why. I hate this game. You gotta love it when people are playing one of the cheapest weapons in the game. Cheapest to use, not cheapest to buy. Big distinction there. Um, and they just put damage up all over it. Alright, got a kill there. Yeah, gonna be honest, this is not one of the better weapons out there. Not a big range blaster guy. What was that? Okay, Luna Blaster. Hate you. 
and Ink Strike just totally decimated that guy. But we're still in the lead and they have not taken the tower? What's going on here? That's actually funny to me. Ah. Okay, looks like they have taken the tower, and we need to get it back. And they are tied. Oh boy. Oh me, oh my. Oh! We're in the lead now. Okay. Come on, cover me, please. What are you doing? What? That actually got a kill. Awesome. What is this charger doing, though? I'm so confused. Oh, they've got a mine on here. And I got scoped. Ugh. You hate to see it. I'm gonna try to build up my Kraken by uh, going other paths. Uh, let's see over here. Alright, I got it. So now I'm gonna use this as a panic button. And they took control. No biggie, I can just... That was actually pretty useless. Oh, direct hit! You love to see it. Oh my god, what is my team doing? Okay, we took the tower. Where are we? We're not on the tower. What the hell's going on? There we, there we go. What? Uh... I hate getting on the tower, because since it's constantly moving, it is impossible to grab onto. Actually, now that I think about it, this is pretty good on the map for uh, being underneath the tower. Oh lord, Luna Blaster. Ah, uh, okay. They took the lead because my team was throwing. Ugh. Or maybe I was throwing. Eh. I was actually trying to push the objective. Everyone else was just away from the tower. They were like, get on the tower, get on the tower. And I couldn't get on the tower because I can't climb for shit. Alright, get on. I'm gonna bide time with this Kraken. Uh, okay, that was actually useless in the long run. Because Luna Blasters are apparently super OP, especially in tower control. And we lost. Ugh. I actually lost the set that was actually good in ranked. Yeah, maybe it was me who was throwing. Yo, as much as I ragged on our charger, they actually did pretty good. I was sitting in the lobby for so long that the that the stages changed. Kelp Dome for Turf War, Bluefin Depot for Turf War also. What are we doing for ranked? Port Mackerel and Camp Triggerfish. Ah, oh, this is infuriating. Okay. Alright, Camp Triggerfish. Rainmaker, okay. Uh-oh, our charger's standing still. That's not a good sign.
Oh, that was incredibly fast. Oh, they have an arrow spray, of course. What are you doing? Move! Oh, this... Nah. Oh, crap. Arrow spray. Get out of the... Go away. Go away. I don't want you here. I hate arrow spray users. They are the actual bane of my existence. You can jump over Seekers, Maroon. Ah, well, match was over anyways. I, I hate this weapon. I hate Blasters. Blasters are the worst weapons in the game, in my opinion. Hate them, hate them. They're awful. They suck. Ugh. So that's how it feels to lose two times in a video? Okay, fine. At least it wasn't three times. Is this what happens when you sit in the lobby for an hour? Why is everyone playing ranked and literally no one's playing Turf War? Okay, that's going to do it for for the video. <sighs> At least next time is going to end on a much brighter note. I already know that for a fact. Next time on Splatoon, we take on the final boss of Octo Valley. See you guys then.